Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs. I am a curriculum developer in the content development department and we'll be discussing router IDs in this segment. First of all, what is a router ID and what is it used for? At its most basic iteration, a router ID identifies a router. But what does this mean? Why is it important to identify a router? For example, your home network, you may have a router that connects you to the internet. This router probably does not need a router ID and it probably wouldn't benefit if it did have one. However, router IDs are needed on routers that use dynamic routing protocols. For instance, if a router is using OSPF, a router ID is needed to form neighbor adjacencies. If a router is using BGP, a router ID is used for path selection. Now let's examine the routing topology we have here. There are five different routers in an OSPF domain and the RIP router that is connected to R5. So in this topology, which routers do you think needs a router ID? All of them? Just the OSPF routers? How about the routers located in area zero? Maybe the routers located in area three? Maybe just the RIP router? The easy answer for this, without a doubt, is all routers. Even if a router doesn't use the router ID in one of its dynamic routing protocols, it doesn't hurt to have it there. In truth, though, only the OSPF routers need a router ID. If the OSPF routers, for some reason, did not have a valid router ID, they could not form any sort of OSPF adjacencies, which in turn causes the network not to be able to route traffic and function properly. But how are these router IDs assigned or acquired on specific routers? Well, the process actually varies for different routing protocols, but with OSPF, it will acquire the router ID from the first interface that comes online which typically will be the loopback interface. If the loopback interface is not configured with a valid IP address that can be used for a router ID, then the router will choose it from the physical interfaces that are configured, and it will select the IP address of the first interface to come online. If multiple interfaces come online at the same time, then the router will select the lowest IP address from those interfaces. And so here in our sample network, we have OSPF adjacencies. They're based on the loopback addresses that we can see over here in this table. And routing information is being passed. Traffic is flowing. So what else needs to be done? You might say everything is working. Why fix something that isn't broken? Well, the short answer is, just because it's not broken now doesn't mean that it can't be broken easily uh, at a later time. For example, say we have the router IDs based off the loopback addresses as we specified earlier, and our sample network is actually having an upgrade in a maintenance window. As you well know, nothing ever goes wrong in a maintenance window. Well, actually, Almost everything can go wrong in a maintenance window. And in this particular maintenance window, there are multiple technicians working at the same time. And one of the technicians, when looking at a certain issue, he decides to remove the loopback address on R4. This causes the adjacencies to flap and reestablish very quickly. As we noted earlier, if there is no loopback address specified, the router will use another interface address. And so the OSPF adjacencies establish and routing information is passed. Everything seems fine. Well, a little while later, the maintenance window is over, declared a success, and everybody goes home. Except for the one tech who forgot to, or who removed the loopback address from R4. 
he notices that he forgot to put that back. And instead of calling everybody back into the maintenance window, he decides just to fix the problem quick and without making much of a fuss. In that process, however, though, he's tired and he ends up entering an incorrect or the wrong IP address for the loopback address. And instead of R4's loopback address of 172.27.22.255.4, he enters 172.27.255.3 which, as you can see, is actually the loopback address for R3. Well, this causes some problems with OSPF. First of all, and most importantly, R3 and R4 have the same router ID. This causes the adjacency between R3 and R4 to be declared down. There's no adjacency between the two routes cannot be shared in that area, or between those two routers. And another problem it creates is R1 now believes it has two adjacencies with R3. And by far and away, the biggest problem is the downed adjacency between R3 and R4. Well, that tech goes home without realizing what happened. In the morning when business starts up, it is noticed that there's congestion, Traffic isn't flowing as smoothly, and what's happening is the link between R3 and R4 can't be used. And so traffic is forced to go a completely different way, and some traffic is getting lost. Well, the tech that is there in the morning is troubleshooting the issue, and he's got to find out what happened and how to fix the issue. So we'll pretend that we're that tech, and we'll switch to a terminal session for R4 and troubleshoot that issue. First of all, the tech would check to ensure that the OSPF adjacencies are down. As you can see, uh, in the router ID field that we have an adjacency with R1, an adjacency with R5, and, and an adjacency with R2. The OSPF adjacency is missing from R3. This is almost a network down issue. The network is crawling we first have to decide what the problem is. And let's look at the line to see if see the exchange happening between R3 and R4. And to do that, we can use the monitor traffic interface command. Specify the interface. And we'll add the detail option to give us more information. That's about all we need. And as you can see in the output, we are sending a packet out. So this is the uh, packet coming from R4. And we know what the problem is. But if we were a tech who didn't know, we would have to digest all this information. But for simplicity's sake, we'll examine the router ID to see exactly what the problem is. And as you can see in the outgoing packet, we're, we are sending a packet out an OSPF hello packet out with the router ID of 172.27.255.3. As we know, this is the incorrect router ID. And we can see an OSPF hello packet coming in from R3 with the router ID of 172.27.255.3. This is definitely a problem. We have a duplicate router ID. So to fix this problem, the tech who would be working on, working on it may not know exactly what is causing this problem. He sees the problem. He doesn't know exactly where the address is that is causing this. This could be on a different interface besides the loopback address. Instead of wasting time troubleshooting that, the tech knows that he can add in a router ID, manually add in the router ID, that is, and this will solve the problem for us. And then he can troubleshoot uh, where the rogue IP address is coming from. So to do that, we'll jump into configuration mode. We'll set the router ID under routing options with the router ID command to the correct router ID of 127.255.4 and commit the configuration. Now, while that configuration commits, we'll talk about the use of manually setting the router ID. It is highly recommended that you always manually set the router ID. 
if the, if the router ID had been manually set on R4 before the maintenance window, this issue would have never occurred. The tech could have removed the IP address and then put the wrong IP address back, and the router ID that would have been used would have been the correct router ID still. It would have not switched over to the duplicate router ID and caused the network outage problem that we saw. And so it is recommended that you always set the router ID manually. So since we have done that, let's examine the OSBF adjacencies on R4. And as you can see, the problem has been resolved, which means that all we need to do now, or all the tech would do next, is uh, chase down that rogue IP address and fix the problem, or, and change it to the right IP address. But for now, the network is stable. The, the network is passing traffic as it was before, and the emergency issue has been resolved. That concludes the router ID section of Juniper Learning Bytes. Thank you for viewing this presentation, and I hope the information we covered in this section will be helpful to you. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learningbytes. They're free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.